What's up, YouTube? All this time making videos and I've never shown you guys the daily driver. Pretty legit, huh? It's my favorite car ever made. Today we are gonna be talking about uh, some health stuff that I've been going through and then we're gonna do a little bit of a home gym tour for the people who have not seen it before and then a quick physique check-in which I am extremely nervous about. So, let's get it all started. Sometime in early November, ish I don't remember the exact date um, I had decided I was gonna kind of wean off of caffeine a little bit it wasn't really for health reasons I just didn't like how much I kind of was reliant on eating my caffeine so I was like hey I'll find a pre-workout out there that doesn't have any caffeine in it and I'll swap um, now for those who don't know I take an energy or drink an energy drink before my cardio and stretch in the morning and then I drink another one before my lift later in the day about 400 milligrams of caffeine a day it's really not that crazy if you drink in your water and stuff, but I was like, I'm gonna wean off of that and start trying to take some something to swap the caffeine for. Um, I found a product, I'm not gonna put them on blast because it really doesn't matter, it's not the product or company's fault, but I found a product that was dosed um, properly for a pre-workout, but it didn't have any caffeine in it, and it had all the other ingredients you would expect, beta alanine, some pump products, whatever. And uh, I told myself, I'll take this instead and see how I like it. Well, in my mind, I didn't know that this product was really the issue. I was just taking it, and obviously I take other supplements and vitamins, so there's a lot of other things in question. But a couple days into this, I was having horrible stomach pains, like really bad stomach pains. I thought maybe I had a bug of some kind. I wasn't really sure what was going on. Another week, two weeks goes on. I end up in the emergency room. Not sure what the hell's wrong with me. They did a CT scan, didn't find anything, which is sometimes scarier than when they do find something because then you're like, well, now what? Um, the ER couldn't really figure out what was wrong. They thought maybe it was some sort of bug or something I just needed to get rid of. So they sent me home, not a, anyway. They sent me home and a few more days go by and things don't get better. They actually get a little bit worse. My stomach feels worse. Um, I was passing blood, which I don't know how many of you that's happened to, but it's not a fun, it's not a fun thing to see, and went back to the ER. Um, I'm not going to give you the entire breakdown because it just kind of dragged on for a little while. Long story short, the ER did not do a good job referring me to a GI. They did not help me find a GI. Um, they just ran up my medical bills, which made my life a lot harder. Um, and I had to find a GI on my own, which then took another month. It's impossible in current American culture to just get referred, so it was just an issue. It was a crazy issue. So I finally found a great GI, ended up getting a colonoscopy. They found out it was like an acute form of colitis, um, which doesn't really mean anything other than just a lot of current inflammation in your body. They didn't want to say what it was or wasn't because there's no way for them to know, but it could be caused by lots of stuff. It can be caused by <sighs> courses of antibiotics. I wasn't on that, but it can be caused by an injury. It can be caused by a lot of stuff, uh, allergic reactions. But long and short of it is, is I lost a lot of weight. I had to go on a bunch of special diets until I finally got a good GI um, and a diagnosis and all that stuff. I lost a bunch of weight. You'll see it. In a lot of my videos the last couple of months, you'll see that I was really struggling holding on to water in my body, so I was very dehydrated and my face looked real kind of just gaunt, looked kind of sunken in, but I did a really good job eating. I did a really good job feeding myself and just trying to stay ahead. And you have to understand, until I got the professional help of a GI, I was just getting advice from fucking nurse practitioners that worked in an ER. So they're telling me liquid diet, then they're telling me nothing other than like rice, boiled potatoes, and anyway, they're making it very hard for me to gain weight with the advice they were giving me, so once I got good advice, it helped a bunch. <laughs> Reflecting back, um, it turns out that it was likely caused by taking too much lion's mane mushroom. Now it doesn't really matter, so don't get defensive if you're someone who really enjoys lion, lion's mane mushroom. I'm not suggesting that it's the fault of the company, that it's the fault of lion's mane mushroom. What I am suggesting is that with supplements, a lot of these health food supplements are not FDA approved. 
They're not heavily studied. And because so many people make money selling lion's mane mushroom, you're gonna have a hard time finding anyone saying anything negative about it on the internet. So I couldn't find any fucking studies about it. I had to do an extremely deep dive to find out that it can cause an overactive immune system. Um, it can trigger that response anyway, which is exactly what it did to me. Um, I have a history of some autoimmune problems. My body will break out in a rash if I work too hard or get inflamed tonsils and go, you know, whatever. But it's like stuff that I'll have overactive immune system and it turns out that that just manifested a digestive problem for me and lion's mane mushroom is never going to be in the cards for me again. So, the lesson is all supplements should be treated very carefully in a sense that you should only introduce one thing at a time ever so that you can tell if one thing is the problem and it doesn't cause a downstream effect and also we should be studying things more deeply before we sell them on such a large scale so no hate towards anybody I'm not talking shit about lion's mane mushroom I know a lot of people really approve of it but if it works if anything works ever then that means there's going to be side effects understand that if there's no side effects with something that just means it doesn't work because there's literally a dose response curve for everything in this world. If you take a little bit, it's probably okay. If you take a little bit more, it probably helps you with something. If you take a little bit more than that, it probably harms you. That goes for fucking, that goes for water, that goes for oxygen, that goes for everything. So don't think that you're different um, and that you can just take whatever you want and not get side effects. At some point, everything has a dose response curve. And the issue is a lot of people do not respond to things the same. And that is not like an esoteric idea. That's just straight up facts. So here I am recovering, doing a lot better. Um, but as somebody who works heavily in the world of fitness and health, um, I felt like the most honest thing I could do is show you guys how much of a struggle and challenge it's been to keep on weight how much of a struggle and challenge it's been to try to stay as muscular as I can. I've been on courses of steroids almost this whole time, uh, not the fun kind. Unfortunately, still have never gotten a chance to try testosterone or anything like that. Um, just straight up steroids, the kind that make life a lot harder. So sleep hasn't been good. Um, the skin on my back kind of breaks out a little bit easier right now because of the steroids. Uh, but the truth is, it's time. It's time to it's time to show you where I'm at right now physically. I'm pretty proud of how much muscle I kept on my body. I'm pretty proud of how good I've eaten. And I'm extremely proud of the fact that I'm doing something like this and showing you guys where my body's at with what I've been going through. So let's fucking do it. Um, this life isn't all about showing the highs. There's going to be moments where you want to show uh, some of the challenging parts. And to be quite frank with you, I'm pretty proud of how good I look considering. So. I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder, it's never been my point in life, it's never been my goal. I'm definitely more of a hybrid style athlete who likes to do cardio, who likes to explore, who likes to live a very active life and also lift. And then we'll do a quick pose down, kind of awkward uh, physique check in. Here we go. Here is the lesson for the day. The biggest accomplishments in fitness and health sometimes are not the accomplishments of the things you get done while you're in the gym. Sometimes the biggest accomplishments are the things that you achieve and get done while still going to the gym and not missing workouts. 
not missing exercise, not eating poorly just because you have so many reasons to not eat well and just kind of throw in the towel for a little bit. So what I did instead is I ate as good as I could because I could control that and I just exercised in chunks that I could manage and it got me through. It got me through while being able to exercise and no, I didn't get any PRs. I didn't improve my physique. Um, I don't look like I could stand on a stage tomorrow. But I'm also, self-admittedly, at least if I give myself a little bit credit, I'm also probably only like three or 4% off. That's a obscure number, but I'm only like 5% off of what I would like to be all the time. And I'd say that's, that's a pretty legit achievement considering what I just went through. So YouTube is the only people to know about this uh, stuff that I've been going through and I just wanna thank you guys because um, it's for whatever reason, the one platform that I felt the most comfortable kind of starting being more open like this. And I think we're gonna keep that shit going. So thank you, stick around. I literally just got fucking started, so we'll talk soon.